Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome to another CBT Nuggets skill. In this skill, we are going to continue our learning about the Kubernetes platform, in particular a concept known as deployments. Now, I've kind of drawn out a simple diagram here that shows what a basic Kubernetes cluster looks like and some of the concepts that we'll be working with. So for starters, you should already be familiar with the basic concepts of a Kubernetes cluster, such as the master nodes, which are responsible for running various components, such as the controller manager, the API server, as well as the scheduler. And then we've also got these worker nodes here, which are basically just workers that are joined to the cluster and the master nodes anytime that the scheduler decides that it wants to put a particular pod onto one of these workers, the workers will actually be responsible for running the containers that make up those pod definitions. Now, pods themselves, when you execute a pod, a pod can have one or more containers inside of it. So a pod and a container do not have a one-to-one -one relationship. A pod can have more than one container, and that's oftentimes useful if you're dealing with applications where you need to have perhaps a logging container that sits as a sidecar to an application container. Um, maybe, for example, in these pods here, you, you might have one container that serves as a web server application, and the other pod simply takes the logs from that web server and then sends them to something like an Elasticsearch cluster or cloud-based logging or something like that. So pods get scheduled onto nodes that are joined to the cluster known as worker nodes. And then another concept that we're going to be dealing with here is something known as a replica set. And the replica set is basically responsible for creating, as the name implies, replicas of pods within your Kubernetes cluster. So oftentimes you might want to deploy a pod out to your cluster. And so you might just go out to the API server through the kubectl command line utility and tell the API server that you want it to provision a pod somewhere onto the cluster. And so it'll go out and the scheduler will find a node that is able to run that pod. It has the necessary resources like CPU and memory in order to run that pod. And it'll schedule it out to go run onto that worker node. However, if you're just doing individual pod scheduling where you're just going out to the API server and say, hey, go run this pod. And you know, I want you to go run another pod, you know, and so it schedules another pod over here. That's kind of a one-off management. That's kind of treating your pods like pets rather than treating them like cattle, which is kind of the preferred way to think about your pods that you're running on a Kubernetes cluster. You don't want to micromanage those pods and, you know, log into those pods and, you know, manage everything inside of those pods. You want to kind of package everything up beforehand. And then when you deploy those pods out to your cluster, you want them to just get scheduled pretty much anywhere on any valid node within the cluster. So rather than just you going out to the API server directly and saying, hey, give me a pod, give me another pod, give me another pod, you can use a replica set instead, and you can basically just hand one of these replica sets off to the API server. So rather than deploying a pod, rather than doing like a kubectl run pod, you would do a kubectl apply on a replica set file that you've already pre-configured, and then the scheduler will handle creating all of the necessary replicas. So it'll maybe spin up a replica here. Maybe it'll put two replicas on the same server. And then maybe this third one over here that you request, maybe that'll get scheduled onto this node right over here on the far left. And so the replica set is basically a controller that will automatically manage these replicas for you so that you don't have to worry about exactly which node those pods are actually getting scheduled onto. Now, the replica set is great if you just want to create replicas of a pod. However, if you need to tear down a replica set and then create a new version, so maybe this one right here is V2, and so you've already deployed V1 here, and you're done with V1, and instead you want to deploy V2. So you bring your V2 file in here, you do a kubectl apply on this new file right here, and then that's going to kind of deploy version two of your replica set out to your cluster. Now, there's a component that can help automate a lot of that process, and that is what is known as a deployment. So with a deployment, 
A deployment is actually kind of a superset, I would like to think of it as, of the replica sets that you're accustomed to when you're just building out replicas of pods. So what a deployment can do for you is it can actually manage multiple replica sets as you are incrementing your your application version over time as you're you know building new features or fixing bugs or any kind of enhancement that you're making to your application so the deployment controller if we bring in a couple different versions of replica sets here maybe version one and version two on the right here the deployment controller is basically a resource that you can deploy using a kubectl apply and once you've configured that deployment, the deployment itself will be responsible for creating a replica set on your Kubernetes cluster, rather than you going directly to the cluster and just telling it that you want to create a replica set. And that's really helpful because the next time that you want to deploy a different version of your application, you basically just update this deployment configuration file. You point it to the new version of your container image that you'd like to deploy and then it will go ahead and spin up a new replica set and deploy that out to your Kubernetes cluster. And then the replica set for V1 that you first created with the deployment is actually still going to be sitting out on your cluster. So essentially what the deployment controller will do is go to the V1 replica set here, and it will slowly decrease the number of pods that are scheduled out onto your cluster, and then slowly increase the number of pods that are scheduled on your cluster from V2 of your replica set. So this gives you a much more graceful cutover for different versions of your application because you can actually run you know, two different versions side by side in different replica sets, uh, but the de deployment controller will handle actually you know, scaling up those replica sets for V2 and then scaling down the V1 replica set rather than having you uh, issue all the individual commands to do that scaling. So that's a much more um, managed approach to deploying new versions of your application. And then one other component that I don't have shown here is the service controller. And so with the service controller, you can set up an, a selector. And so with your different replica sets here, you can set up different selectors. And so if you want your service to point over to V2 of your application, once it's been spun up, you can simply point your service controller over to a different selector. And you could have you know, some kind of label like version V1, version V2 assigned to your different pods and then the service controller can handle pointing to different versions of your application so the deployment controller can kind of handle deploying the multiple replica sets and then as far as which replica set is actually being exposed is kind of up to your service controller using label selectors so what we're going to do is take a look at the deployment specification and understand how to create one of these with a pod spec that's embedded inside of it and then we'll take a look at the behavior of the API server when you deploy that deployment out to the API server, what exactly is happening under the covers in terms of these replica sets and these pods that are getting deployed out to your cluster through those replica sets. And then there's a couple of different strategies that you have for updating too. You can do just a hard cut over or you can do a progressive process where it, it uh, spins down the pods for V1 and progressively spins up the pods for V2 like we just talked about. So we'll explore this behavior in a bit more depth, but first we need to get a cluster up and running. So I'm going to be using Amazon Web Services Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS. Um, I've actually got a separate skill that talks about how to deploy clusters using the EKS CTL command line utility, which is an open source tool from Weaveworks. So we'll start out by setting up a cluster with that utility, and then we'll go ahead and start playing around with that cluster and taking a look at the deployment specification files and how we can use those to deploy our replica sets out to our cluster. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.